you, you could have chosen any material in a way because each each material strand from the settlement is exceptional and it's exceptional because what tends to happen in archaeology is that you do find quality objects and things but they tend to be rare in the assemblages you're used to potsherds and bits of bone and burnt stone and things like that With, within each of the material categories in the settlement there's a sense that that we have quantity and quality and and the metalwork is a really good example of that so you know there's there's over 100 pieces of metalwork from the settlement. We were able to pretty much s describe individual assemblages from individual structures. Um, and then you get a sense of toolkits and inventories and the sense of, you know, what, does, what metalwork does structure one hold? And one of the, the dominant pieces of metalwork from across the settlement were socketed axes. So we had 20 in total from across the settlement and there are seven from structure one so these are these are late bronze age our understanding of the date of the settlement is that it sits in the middle of the 9th century bc so to all intents and purposes we're going to say that these axes were in use in 850 bc um, and they are so if we take this as, as an example these are these are what's known as socketed axes so they they have they have a, a socket in, into which basically the, the wooden haft goes in. There's these little side loops, which is to do with basically attaching it to that to that wooden haft. And you can see that they've been cast. You can you can even see the, the sort of casting mark running down the side. It's funny because axes are 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 the, the usual context for the finding of socketed axes within the British Bronze Age is hordes and dryland hordes. And yet, to actually find socketed axes within a settlement context is, is, is unheard of in that sense. So, you know, we look at the, met the metallurgical composition of these axes and things, and we might be able to say that some of the axes came from a, you know, were manufactured in a different part of the country from, a, from another set and things. So there's all those potential possibilities of, of coming out of a single object and things. So, yeah, I think, I think there's a... It's, it's almost too much, I suppose, because it's like, you know... We, we can we can think about different facets of the project and each one is is, is almost a, a a monograph in itself sort of thing i think before we, we dug the site you maybe you you talk about these objects of being of, as being quite sort of special in in the the sort of daily practice of, of a bronze age person's life and things and 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 we've given this sort of sense of specialness in fact when we find them being deposited as hordes we, we talk about this being sort of some you know, amplified moment within within Bronze Age life and things, and yet the, the ubiquity of these objects within the settlement, it may be that we've actually sort of devalued them slightly. They might become a bit more everyday in that sense, and it may make us think differently about the sort of currency of these objects and things. But equally, I think the importance of these objects might be coming at us from another another perspective, which is that, remember, each of these blades has its own sort of signature, and we've got all this wooden architecture that's got all these axe marks in it and things so we might actually be able to trace them into the construction of the settlement and things and then we might actually get at the individual by the idea that we might say you know we can recognize 20 different people involved in the construction of the settlement and things like that so it might be a little more sort of tangential in that sense but a real sense of uh, the scale of their endeavor I think is what I find really interesting I think.